Time now for the Sunday Roundtable here on OTR, and here we are back at the Sunday Roundtable. Yeah, all right, woohoo! We're joined by Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh, Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to see you guys. Let, let me ask you, Marianne, and you just heard Senator Markey. How optimistic should we be? Are we that U.S. troops will not be put in harm's way? Well, even if we stop uh, Putin in Ukraine. They will be in harm's way because we're part of NATO. I mean, Poland's right there. Let me go through all the lists. Putin's real goal here is not just Ukraine and not just reconstituting the Soviet Union. It's to march across Europe and do to that continent what he is doing to Ukraine, just like Hitler did in World War II. The United States of America must stop Putin. We had the chance to do it in 2015 and 2016. We ended up with Trump and Putin, and that led to this day, and we have no choice but to stop him. What's your read, Bob? Well, I'm going to tell you what Ed Markey left out. What he left out is that why is Putin doing this? In large part because when Obama was president and Biden was vice president in 2014, they let Putin take the Crimea region of Ukraine. So what a surprise. He's back from war at the buffet. I was also disappointed by the president this week on Friday announces his Supreme Court nominee um, to take attention away from what's going on in the Ukraine and the, the lack of a uh, U.S. role, I, I think it was, um, you know, a bad political move. And it, it, it doesn't make me think that things are going well in the mm -hmm. Ukraine. I, ju I just want to add quickly, though, Trump was the aider and a better to Putin for four years and helped him get to this. No, that, Trump has Every, Trump has responsibility. Obama has responsibility yep. um, before and after that happened in the Crimea. The U.S. should have been arming the Ukrainians more so that they could hold something like this. He off. attacked our election. We didn't stop. Yeah, him. I mean. Yeah. Putin's sending cruise missiles and Biden's waving a, a feather duster back right now. Um, we could talk about this all morning, but let's talk about some local issues. Michelle Wu has 100 days under her belt. She's faced daily nasty demonstrators at her front door at home. Um, a reignited pandemic, many big promises to fulfill and key departments still waiting for leaders. So what's your assessment, Rob, of her progress to date? I mean, I, I think it's average. She's taken on some things like the schools, getting a new superintendent, that's not going to be easy. That is a risky political move. At the same time, she's, she's definitely left a trail of sort of wokeness and woke initiatives, which I think aren't going to help anybody in the city. Uh, this week, she announced an urban agriculture office. Not exactly having your finger on the pulse. Agree, disagree, Marianne? Well, that's, of course, to help with food insecurity, which many people across the city of Boston suffer from, unfortunately. Um, undeterred, Michelle Wu is methodically marching through the promises she made in her campaign that led to an overwhelming victory and a mandate for everything she's doing. So, yes, she's doing everything from mass and cass, doing the bus lines, but also the Boston Public Schools, to Rob Point, and the superintendent, the commissioner of the Boston Public Police Department, all in the face of racist slurs constantly that other mayors have not been subjected to, nor protests at their home. So she's going to be very successful, and I think she's off to a great start. School, police department, what do you think is more important to handle first, quickly? I, I think that's a shiny object. She's going to make more of a difference in people's lives. Do They're both minefields. Okay. They're both important. Exactly. Let, let's, talk about, let's talk about the governor's race. Governor Baker may not be running for a third term, but he apparently will be active in raising major dollars for and campaigning with moderate candidates this fall. So is it... Clear challenge to Jeff Deal. Are, are the ultimate winners in this Democrats, Marion? Well, yes, in the end, because Democrats are the only ones who can get elected to office and stand up to the anti-American, anti-democratic activities of Donald Trump, Jeff Deal, Jim Lyons, and everybody else in the Massachusetts Republican Party who got a beachhead here. I credit Charlie Baker for doing it. He's years late to the dance. Rob? Listen, uh, Charlie Baker, the, the only thing he could have done to help Republicans here is to run for re-election himself. I mean, no matter what he does with this money, Democrats are the overwhelming favorite to win all of the statewide offices. I think we'll have some impact supporting moderate candidates at the local level, mayors, city councilors, that type of thing. So Governor Baker this week asked the legislature to, for $700 million in tax cuts. Most are directed at low and moderate income taxpayers, but a couple only benefit the wealthy, well-to-do. Democratic leaders don't usually like cutting taxes. What are the odds the governor can push this through before he has to walk out the door, Rob? I think there's decent odds that he can push through part of it. I don't think the Democrats are going to go along with all of it. But they like the idea of supporting some tax cuts because, let's face it, on the other side of the ledger, they're supporting a huge income tax increase on the ballot in 2022. 
Marianne? On the wealthiest. Um, Democrats like the part that helps the lower to middle income families who've been hurt, especially during the pandemic and inflation. They can do that without Charlie Baker. His bargaining chip is that uh, tax cut that will only benefit 150,000 people in Massachusetts to the tune of $117 million. That's his bargaining chip. I think they, Mariano and Spilka might go ahead with the cuts without that.